And welcome back to the channel where we talk about only good comics. I'm Brant and this is Top 5 Comics of the Week. So this week we do not have an episode of Comic Book Weekly because of the election and cat traveling. So um, I decided to do my Top 5 on this channel again. Uh, so I'm ready to share those books with you. It was a lighter week this week. So my top picks are uh, different probably than a normal week just because of the titles that were available but I'm also going to talk about a few other books that I read um so first let me say that Kill All Immortals issue number four came out digitally this week and but it comes out physically th tomorrow so um I'm I'm not going to include that in my top five it would have been in my top five it probably would have been like my number two um, I did really enjoy that issue, so I am going to talk about it briefly, but I kept it out of my top five just because it didn't come up physically. So um, this uh, this had a conclusion. I mean, it wasn't the end of the story, but the end of this issue had a conclusion that I was not expecting. Um, but maybe the writing was on the wall with the way things played out as Freya is trying to fight still for her independence from her siblings and trying to protect her, her boyfriend, who is a journalist. Uh, but things don't go quite like any of them plan it to. And uh, everyone is kind of left um, confused and um, in dire straits by the end of this issue. So really strong narrative throughout this issue as Freya just kind of continues to stand up for herself, but also has to be honest with herself. So uh, really solid issue that because it didn't come up physically, it did not be my my top five this week. Um, some other books I read. Amazing Spider-Man number 60. The last uh, issue of Zeb Wells' run. Um, this is actually my top ten. But it is not my top five. Um, this was an interesting way to close out someone's run on a book. Because what we got basically was an anthology of short stories. That each story wrapped up a different plot thread that Wells had opened. And then also kind of laid the, the groundwork for certain elements for the next, you know, creator to come on. And then, of course, we got the, you know, the tease of, of that story as well um, and, and playing into the Doom stuff. But we got little shorts on Chasm, Rec Rap, uh, Tombstone, etc. And it, it was a little odd, um, but overall... It wasn't a bad read at, at all. I actually liked the uh, the stuff between Peter and May, and you almost got the impression, as we've gotten in the in the past from past stories and stuff, that May kind of knows that Peter is Spider Man, uh, but neither one of them will admit it to to the other. So I, I think that was an interesting thread to to pull on. Um, there was a little thing where Mary Jane and Peter. Uh, had a little flirtation and knowing that they would be there for each other, but still moving on because that's kind of, you know, the, the mandate for <laughs> Peter and MJ right now. Um, it has been for quite a while. They can't be together. Um, so it kind of sucks, but it, it was an, it was, it was a fun way to handle it. So all in all, it wasn't a bad read. It wasn't a terrible way to go out. Uh, probably more fun than the last, several arcs um this issue so um yeah that that was amazing spider-man uh multiverse's collision detected probably the weakest issue of, of the four so far but still a fun series just fun mashing these worlds together um you know steven universe scooby-doo uh the dc heroes um various other uh you know cartoon characters involved as well it's just bugs bunny fun times in this book um hex Isles, i did try that issue one from cullen bunn um and uh it just it's not really my thing so i don't think i'm going to continue with it i talked about it on friday first um so if you want to get my thoughts on that you can you go check that out so i won't spend a whole lot of time here the last episode of friday first i talked about it but basically i enjoyed the story i enjoyed the direction of it but i don't know that it's for me that, that's the gist of it. Um, let's see. I uh, I read part. I read two of the stories in Power Rangers across the Morphin Grid so far. 
Um, both of them were pretty solid. The first one with uh, that was written by David Yost, who played Billy, the Blue Ranger on Morph- Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, the original one, um, was was pretty fun. I, I liked the way that that came together. Um, I liked that. It, at first, you thought maybe he was the only one that survived, but it, you know we learn you know later on that they're just separated. But I, I still like the narrative that he carries them all in his heart, and he they're with him at all times. So it was you know kind of a, a nice touch, um, especially considering two of them have passed on. So um, uh, let's see what else do I want to talk about before I get in my top five. Um, Venom War Zombie Oats. We had the return of Boomerang in this. Uh, issue it's been you know playing out over the past uh, couple of issues as well especially last issue but this issue uh we finally get that back it was a really nice narration by uh shocker kind of uh you know dismissing the feelings that were obviously there um so that was fun this this book was unexpected treat within the whole venom more stuff so i enjoyed that uh those are the main ones. I think Namor is another one that I, I contemplated about my top five. Um, I really like this series. I think it's a really strong um, story about Namor's kind of redemption and kind of him taking back the sea. So he has been kind of excommunicated from Atlantis and everything. And he's been trying to convince these seven kings uh, of their um, wrong ways that they don't need to go to war, that it's going to ruin everything. And in the process, by the end of this issue, he realizes how bad things have gotten. And at the same time, we get some flashbacks to his early years as Prince Namor, um, kind of see who he who he was and who shaped how it shaped who he became. And obviously, he kind of took some wrong turns here and there, but I think this series is trying to get him back to the core of the hero that he can be. Um, so we'll see how it plays out, but it's, it's been a really strong story uh, so far. All right. So let's get into my top five this week. Uh, coming in at number five is red coat from image comics, ghost machine. This was kind of an epilogue uh, and just kind of a one off story that kind of flings us into the future. Um, obviously the, the first arc was dealing with, um, the early years of Albert Einstein, you know, things were, it, it was still revolutionary times uh, before the turn of the century, I believe. Um, and all of this, so they were running around, you know, fighting Benedict Arnold and all this stuff. Um, so this issue fast forwards to 1955, which is the year that Albert Einstein passed away. And so we see Simon pure still looking exactly the same, having, uh, kind of reconnecting with Albert Einstein while he's in the hospital on his deathbed and having the two connect uh, on an emotional level and Albert Einstein still seeing the good in, in Simon Pure even after, you know, decades of misdeeds, but still some really good deeds in there as well. So it was a really touching issue. Um, it would have fallen just outside of my top five just because it was just kind of this one shot story. Uh, but it was it was a really touching and emotional issue. And you also got to see uh, towards the end how Simon has dealt with people that he was close to passing away over and over and over again. And the toll that this started to take on him. So uh, really interesting there. So now we're going to get a brand new arc starting in December um, with issue number eight. Looking forward to that, seeing where this goes, what time period this takes place in and everything. So, uh, yeah, this this book has been really solid so far. At number four, we have Feral, issue number seven as well. Um, This is from Image Comics also. And this issue saw um, kind of a reuniting by the end in in an unexpected way. So, But first, the kittens um, and Elsie, Ellie Elsie, I can't remember her actual name, um, are like, hold up in this barn and they're trying to not go outside, but then they, you know, encounter this nest of, uh, uh, rabid rats as depicted there on the, on the cover. And they have to, you know, kind of escape from that only to get caught again, only to be reunited. So, uh, interesting way that that came about and it gave me vibes of, uh, stray dogs towards the end. And I don't know if that's where we're headed or if we're, actually in a good place so we'll, we'll have to see how that plays out come next issue 
but yeah, it was it was a pretty fast read, which this series typically is. Uh, but it was still, uh, you know, a, a pretty good issue. Coming in at number three, also from Image, uh, Image Heavy Week this week, I guess. Uh, we have It Happened on High Street, Devour. Um, this was a one shot uh, out of the uh, out of the uh, kind of spinning out of the series Hyde Street. We've only had one issue so far, but this was um, and I talked about this on um, Friday first as well. This was uh, featuring this other character that is a collector of souls, uh, which is what Hyde Street is all about. There's these people that find them find their way on Hyde street. And some of them are given the choice to, you know, kind of work their way out, uh, to gain so many souls that they, uh, gain their freedom kind of things. We, we've met the boy scout, we've met Mr. X-ray. And now we meet this other one, which is this lady on the cover who's selling these supplements, um, to, for, for weight loss and fitness. And it happens and it starts in the eighties and, you know, fast forwards through the years, we see a, a grandmother, her daughter and her granddaughter all, kind of fall prey to this to this uh product we'll we'll call it um and obviously the product has some some drawbacks and uh ultimately you know fatal consequences for uh for these people but no matter how much they resist uh all all of them kind of fall prey to it but it's it's a strong story where we start off with the grandmother who is uh a little overweight and she's looking for a way and she stumbles into the shop and finds it and becomes obsessed with it and kind of, uh, you know, kind of forces it upon her daughter and her daughter wants her daughter, which is the, the original character, the grandmother to grow up without this, without this pressure and everything. But ultimately she's like, yeah, you're, you're just not listening to us. So, uh, she kind of persuades her as well. And then they're all three. So, Interesting story, given the time that it came out, day before Halloween, um, very Twilight Zoney, very, you know, Tales from the Crypt kind of story. Uh, it just hit the right notes for this week. So that's why it's in my top five. But I, I really did enjoy it. Art was really solid as well. And uh, so that's Devour. Coming in at number two, we have Uncanny Valley issue number six from Boom Studios. This was an interesting and revealing um, issue. So we knew going into this issue that this was going to be um, kind of revealing the the history of this cartoon world, but I didn't expect what we got. So basically, um, and this is in the we we learned this in the preview. So there was there's like a six page five five or six page preview that was released. You can look at it on uh, Amazon. Um, you can read that. So this isn't really spoiling anything that's not already out there if you have not read this. Uh, so we all know that the Steamboat Willie version of Mickey Mouse is public domain now. And they took full advantage of that <laughs> in this issue. Um, and you can see it painted into the overall concept of the story because this villain that is kind of the overlord of the cartoon world is like we thought it was a rat. It's actually a mouse. Um, it's just an older version of our classic Mickey Mouse, Steamboat Willie, which was a blew my mind that they went there. It was kind of cool. We saw the beginnings of uh, cartooning, basically, and how somehow this cartoon world that is created, as we learned by the end of the issue, I won't spoil that little twist, but... It is created, but somehow it is alive and it is connected to our world in that everything that happens to our world happens in their world. So when we had the Ice Age that killed all the dinosaurs, it killed all the cartoons and, and so on and so forth. Every war impacted them. And then lo and behold, we come onto a girl who is sickly, can't be out in the sun, the air outside she's literally allergic to it and so falls in love with cartoons and long story short the cartoons escape their world into ours at some point she interacts finds that world falls in love and thus begins our tale with with the child that is half cartoon half human um and so it all comes from from that and 
it's all run and all led by Mickey Mouse, <laughs> basically. <laughs> Which was just an interesting twist that we basically have Yosemite Sam and Mickey Mouse um, at war. And it's just, it's crazy. It's Disney and Warner Brothers, right? So it's it's a really interesting concept when you come down to it that way. Uh, so it's just a fantastic issue that just, you know, turned everything on its head once again. And I cannot wait to see what happens next in this book. And finally, my number one is Nightclub issue number three. Uh, Nightclub two, issue number three. This is the second volume. Um, things did not go the way that I thought they were going to go in this issue. I mean... It went bonkers. So last issue, we know that I can't remember the character's name, but the one that was on his own, uh, maybe Sam, I, I don't remember. Um, we we know that he had gone on his own because he was jealous over the relationship of his two friends. So he had fallen in with the wrong crowd and he had spilled the beans on how he was so powerful that, the, that they were vampires. And because of this, the girl persuades him to turn her and then she turns all her friends and things go, you know, totally upside down for the nightclub at that point. Right. So now we have this whole gang of vampires and we know they're going to war. Right. I just didn't think it was going to escalate as far as it did in this issue, which I don't want to spoil it because it's a pretty big thing that happens in this issue. But let's just say not everybody comes out alive and Things are not looking good for the nightclub at this point. So, um, yeah, very heavy series, this one, uh, and very dark issue, but very good, very well written. And it's it just proves in this world that no one is safe, stakes are incredibly high, and don't get too attached <laughs> <laughs> so that is why it's my number one. It was just a really strong series. So that's my top five for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you liked when I mix it up and do it on this channel. Uh, for my usual top five, come check us out over at Comic Book Weekly. We do that most Tuesday nights. We will be back next week after the election. So uh, November 12th, um, we'll be back for a new episode. It'll just be Mike and I. Kat is still going to be out of the country. Uh, but she'll be back on the next one. So uh, join us every week, except for the weeks that we take off uh, for our top five over there. But when we don't do that, I'm really going to try to do it over on this channel. So if you did like it, please give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe and notification bell so you don't miss any of the other content on this channel. Um, Friday 1st coming up on this uh, Friday, of course. And you can follow me across social media at Only Good Comics or type in OnlyGoodComics.com to bring you right back to this YouTube channel where we talk about only good comics. Until next time, thanks for watching. Take care. Keep reading those comics. And I'll see you soon.